Hey everybody, so today we're gonna to install and run Stable Diffusion. We're gonna use DForum's Google Colab Notebook of Stable Diffusion. So the first thing we need to do is go to drive.google.com, log in with your Gmail. Then go over to the DForum Discord server, go to official links, and open the official notebook. So this is the DForum Stable Diffusion Notebook, and the first thing we want to do here is make sure that we're in the correct Gmail, the same Gmail that you're logged into with your drive, and save a copy of this notebook in your drive. This is going to give you multiple open tabs. Uh, the one you want to work with is copy of Deform Stable Diffusion. If you have others that say Deform Stable Diffusion, close those tabs just so you don't end up working in the, the wrong notebook. And if you go back to your drive, you'll notice that uh, Google Colab has created a folder in your drive called Colab Notebooks, and inside that folder is your copy of DForum Stable Diffusion. So let's take a look at this. Um, so a Google Colab notebook is a collection of code that's run in sequence. And so you can see there's a play button by each section of code. And these are all executed or played in sequence in order to run the text to image generation software. And if you click show code, it will show you the code that that section of the notebook is running. If you want to hide the code, double click to the right. Show code will show you the code for the environment setup, for instance, and double click to hide the code. So there's a lot, a lot of settings here. We're just going to look at a few of them. Under path setup, uh, the important setting I want to look at for now is the model checkpoint, which is which model uh, we're using. Uh, the default is Protogen version 2.2, and, and let's keep it to be Protogen version 2.2 for now, um, because it uh, we can download it without needing to log into and create an account on any other services. Uh, but there's a bunch of other models that we can use, and you may want to experiment with those moving forward. Um, that's the only thing we're going to look at right now in the path setup. Under settings, uh, right now we're just going to be generating still images, so the animation mode is set to none. Uh, later we're going to be looking at the different animation modes, but for now leave the animation mode set to none, which means that none of these animation related settings are going to be used right now. Then we get down to the prompts, and the prompts are uh, what you're familiar with from mid-journey, a text prompt that will generate the image. What's a little bit different here is uh, the prompts are enclosed in this structure, prompts equals square bracket, all the prompts, and then a closing square bracket. And then down here are animation prompts, um, which are enclosed in a curly bracket. And because we have animation mode set to none, these animation prompts will be ignored for the moment. But these text prompts, there's uh, there's text prompts in orange and text prompts in green. The ones in orange are the ones that are going to be executed, and the ones that are in green are not going to be executed. They're muted because they have a hashtag in front of them which comments them out. Um, so if you want to uh, activate one of these prompts and generate a third image, just remove the hashtag, and now a third image will be generated. And note that the prompts need to be in quotation marks and be followed by a comma. So right now, uh, I'm going to leave these two default prompts in place, and I'm just adding a third prompt, a futuristic robot. Uh, then down here under the settings, a few settings to look at. Uh, the image settings allows me to set the width and height of the image that I'm creating. The default is 512 by 512. You can set this to whatever you want. For instance, 1024 by 768. Um, and seed, which we're familiar with from mid-journey, um, allows us to set the starting parameters of the image generation. A seed of negative one will start with a random seed, and you can put any arbitrary number in here so that you can replicate exactly the same image by giving it the same seed. Batch name is the name of the folder that's going to be created 
in your Google Drive and the name uh, attached to the images that are going to be generated. The init image is like an image prompt in Midjourney. Um, it's not going to be utilized unless you check on use init and then you have a strength parameter which allows you to set how strongly that image will affect the generated image. For now we'll leave use init unchecked. Um, there's many many more settings here uh, none of which we need to deal with right at the moment. Oh and we are going to leave this just for the moment we'll leave this as stable fun. We'll change that later so that new folders will be created for the image for the images that we're generating. And at the bottom, create video from frames. This will create a short video showing the process of the image generation. If you uh, want to, at the moment we're saying skip this video run, do not generate the image. So once uh, the settings have been adjusted, it's just a matter of going to runtime, run all, and it will run each segment of code in sequence. So first it's taking a look at what GPU is available to us. Uh, that's not the GPU on your computer, that's the GPU that Google Colab is using. Then there's some steps in setting up the environment that it's going to go through. It's executing this code right here. And as each step is completed, it gets a green check mark next to it saying that step has been run. It's going to ask for permission to access your Google Drive files. You want to allow it access by clicking connect to Google Drive, choosing your Gmail account, and saying allow. As part of the path setup, it's going to download our model, in this case the Protogen model, and this is not being downloaded to your computer, this is being downloaded to your Google Drive. So it's downloading from cloud service to cloud service. It's going to download quite fast, even though it's large, 4.27 gigabytes. You're going to want to make sure you have plenty of space in your Google Drive because just the model that we're downloading here is uh, over 4 gigabytes. And if we start working with multiple models and generating lots of images and animations, it's going to consume space in your Google Drive pretty quickly. Once it has the model completely downloaded, it's going to check the model and then download a few more components that it needs to operate. Once it's got all those components downloaded, this step is complete. It moves on to the animation settings. We've selected animation mode none, so these settings are just going to be ignored. And then it moves on, evaluates our prompts, and then in the load settings section, it actually starts to generate our images. So you can see the first image here is being generated. And once it's generated, it will appear. And it'll also be saved to your drive. You can see that the Colab Notebook created a folder for the copy of Deform Stable Diffusion and also created a folder called AI. It's downloaded the model, Protogen model, to the models folder. And then in the Stable Diffusion folder, there's going to be a folder for each month and then a folder for each batch. We left the default name stable fun, and then each image is going to be automatically downloaded to your Google Drive. So there's the image that we just generated. And we see that Stable Diffusion is still running. It's generated the second image and the third image. And since we skipped video run for all, we get a green check mark here because it did nothing and it's complete. And so now we can go back in and put in new prompts. And I don't have to rerun all the cells. I can now just reevaluate the prompts by clicking on this button. It's reevaluated the prompts. And then I can change any settings I want to ch change. For instance, I can 
change this batch name to robot cat and rerun load settings it'll evaluate the settings and begin generating the image while it's generating go back over to our Google Drive and take a look there's the images we created the robot the portrait the lake and then it's created a robot cat folder for our new image, which as soon as it's completed will be displayed here on the screen and also will be saved into the Google Drive. So one other feature I'm going to show today, and just to make the image generation faster, uh, I'm going to take the image setting size back down is that I can create a batch of multiple images say eight images and I'm going to iterate the seed by one each time so that the first image will be generated with seed 101. The next image will be generated with seed 102. The next image will be generated with seed 103, etc. And if I want to, I can also make a grid image which will display all eight of my images together. So now I've evaluated the, the prompt. I'll use the same prompt. Hit load settings and now it's going to make eight images because I've selected a batch size of eight and it's going to give each it's going to generate each image based on a different seed increasing by one each time and then it's going to create a grid image of all eight images side by side and we can watch that process happening there's image number one uh, it started with seed 102 so it didn't start at 101 it started one later it's uh, seed 102 seed 103 seed 104 seed 105, etc. It takes all of those images and also places them into a single gridded image. And if we take a look back in the Google Drive, we see that we get our grid image and the eight individual images all saved in the Google Drive and because I didn't change the name also my initial uh, image that I generated is saved in here as well and the settings that I used are saved in a text file along with the images so that if you ever want to go back to a particular set of settings you have this settings.txt file that will give you the settings you use to generate that series of images. If you want to utilize a starting image or a seed image, um, here we have use init. Select use init and then put the init image in here. And it's quite easy to uh, move from Discord to uh, your Colab notebook just by switching to Discord. Grabbing an image. copy the link, go back into the notebook, paste the link, and set the strength Reevaluate the prompt. I'm not going to make eight images this time. I will simply make a batch of one image. I'll call it Cat Planet. And make a larger image, like 1024 by 768. 
8, load settings, which will trigger the image generation. And you can see how the image that I chose here is influencing the final image that's being generated by stable diffusion. And if I wanted more influence from that image, I could simply ramp up the image strength and run load settings again. And now we can see there's a much greater influence from the init image, but it's still responding to my prompt by putting a cat into the, into the image. And of course, these are both made with the same seed. I still have seed 101 typed in, so if I wanted to totally re-roll this and get something different, I can put in a different seed number and run it again, and now my initial uh, starting place for the image and thus the result are going to be quite different. But still strongly influenced by the starting image. So now it gave me two cats. One of them's kind of a unicorn cat. And, uh, but still also we see a lot of influence from the seed image. So that's just a quick introduction to how to install Stable Diffusion and a few of the, of the many, many features um, that Stable Diffusion has and that this notebook gives us access to.